I'd like now to introduce Ibero's president and CEO, Hilda Rosario Escher. Thank you, Maureen. Good afternoon and welcome. Bienvenidos. Como están todos? It gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome Governor Andrew Cuomo to our luncheon. Governor Cuomo has been a dear friend to me and Ibero. He has supported our initiatives, stood by us through difficult times, and recognizes the value of our work in this community. He's also a true champion of diversity for the upstate communities and the state in general. Under Governor Cuomo's leadership, New York State has set goals of ensuring that 30% of all state contracts go to MWBEs. That's the most ambitious state contracting goal in support of women and minority-owned business in the nation. I also admire Governor Cuomo for his commitment to the state region. I have been, I have to say that I, I have been living here for over 30 years, and I have never seen a governor that has paid so much attention to us say, thank you very much. <laughs> From his support of our regional council initiatives to the Rochester Monroe Anti-Poverty Task Force, the governor is focusing on what we need most and giving us the tools to succeed. We are truly thankful for all your work and the initiative you have started in an effort to revitalize upstate New York. He's a governor that, who truly does what he says he's going to do. I tell you, he truly cares. That is why I am very proud and honored to present the governor with the Champion of Diversity in Upstate Communities Award in recognition of his commitment to generating economic opportunities and employment for Latinos in Upstate region. Please join me in welcoming our governor, our fantastic governor, Andrew Cuomo. Well, thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to be back in Rochester, and let me begin by thanking Ibero and Hilda so much for those very kind words uh, and the real organization and real person that deserves an award today is Ibero and Hilda Rosario Escher for all their great work all year long. Uh, Hilda was a pioneer in being a voice for diversity and for standing up for the uh, Latino community. So let's give her a round of applause and Ibero. To Maureen McGuire, who's in a very tough business, the news business. I have a, my younger brother, Chris, is in the news business. And I like to tease Chris. Uh, I say, you know, I want to see what you do one day when the teleprompter goes out. <laughs> so uh, I got a sense of what happens when the teleprompter goes out, Maureen. But boy, was she cool under fire. And we thank her for what she does. And we thank her for being a great voice for the news. Let's give her a round of applause. To your great mayor, my partner, Mayor Lovely Warren, pl pleasure to be with you, Mayor. Let's give the mayor a round of applause. We have Cesar Perales here, who is uh, our Secretary of State. We have Rose Rodriguez, who is the Diversity Officer. I'm here 
with my colleagues from Albany, Senator Robach and Senator Funky, who represent their districts extraordinarily well, and we've gotten a lot done in partnership, and I'd like to acknowledge them and give them a round of applause. And Assemblyman Marcus Crespo, who's not from here, he's a little north of where he normally is. Uh, he's from New York City, but he is a bright rising star in the Assembly. We just had a few good days together. We went to Puerto Rico for uh, a few days to help out Puerto Rico with their fiscal crisis. They are in the middle of a very difficult, difficult situation. Uh, so we went down to offer some advice on how to handle their fiscal crisis and bring down some of their expenses in health care. And uh, Assemblyman Marcos Crespo uh, was fantastic in Puerto Rico. Uh, as I said, he is a rising star, and you're going to see a lot more and hear a lot more from him. Marcos Crespo, pleasure to be with him. <laughs> and to the rest of the members of the head table, to all of you, thank you very much for this honor. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today, and it's my pleasure to talk a little bit about the state and what we're trying to do in the state uh, and what's going on on the broader context of uh, this country and the current mood that the country is in and the, and the political cycle that the country is in. First, for the state, you get the real sense that the state is in transition and the state is moving and making progress. And we've been working very hard together, uh, and the state legislature and the governor have been getting along in a way they haven't gotten along for a long time. You know, Washington is now gridlocked. They think they discovered gridlock. They didn't discover gridlock. New York discovered gridlock. We had gridlock long before Washington ever found it. Uh, and our gridlock was a little mean or a little nastier than the Washington gridlock. Uh, but we gave that up. And we made government work because we learned in New York that when you have gridlock, everybody loses. When government stops functioning, everybody loses. Uh, and that in Albany, we choose to compromise uh, and get along rather than paralyze the entire state. And it's having an effect. And you can see the progress that the state is making all across the state. I think if you need one word that is the theme of what we're doing in New York, it is uh, restoring justice, the concept of justice. Now, when you say justice, the mind automatically goes to criminal justice. That's what people think of. The criminal justice system, prison, incarceration, et cetera. That's one form of justice. This state does that extraordinarily well. This nation does it extraordinarily well. You might argue too well. We lock up more people than any industrialized nation on the globe in this country. Uh, if we took the money that we spend on a prison, you could pay for a Harvard education for the amount of money it costs us to incarcerate a person. Uh, you want to talk about reverse priorities. But there are other forms of justice also. There's economic justice and social justice and racial justice. We don't talk as much about those concepts anymore, but they are very real and they are the true meaning of justice. And that's what we're working on in the state. You talk about economic justice. The truth is that upstate New York has had significant economic problems for a very long time. Uh, and the state, frankly, was not of the help it should be for upstate New York. New York, you almost had two economies. You had the downstate economy, and you had the upstate economy. And the downstate economy has been going very, very well, ups and downs, but the, the basic trajectory has been up for a long, long time. Upstate New York, ups and downs, but the basic trajectory has been down for a long, long time, literally. 30, 40 years of decline in upstate New York. Why? Well, number one, the manufacturing base that was uh, upstate New York started to move away, went overseas. Number two, the state's taxes were too high. We were driving businesses out. We were driving people out. Property tax in upstate New York, one of the highest property taxes in the nation in upstate New York, chasing people from upstate New York. 
And one of the other reasons was the state government was not there to help upstate the way they needed to be helped. Because the transition to a new economy is not that easy. And yesterday was Kodak. The question is, what is tomorrow? And you need help in making that transition. And the state government was more focused on downstate than upstate. We have reversed this because it wasn't right, it wasn't fair, it wasn't economically just. And over the past four years, we have invested more in upstate New York's economy than has been invested since the state built the Erie Canal, believe it or not. You know, and you, you now see and feel that the upstate economy is responding. Today, the state of New York has more private sector jobs than have ever existed before, period. And unemployment is down in every region of the state, including every region in upstate New York. You go all across the state, and unemployment is down. And you feel the optimism. And you can feel and see the development. You go to Buffalo, Buffalo is like a different place than it was 15 years ago. And the cynicism is gone, and the skepticism is gone. Rochester, we were here with the vice president uh, a couple of weeks ago introducing the new photonics center, which is going to be a national or an international economic development center. Syracuse, we're redoing the state fair. They just opened the new amphitheater. Albany is now the international center of nanotechnology, making the smallest computer chips in the world in Albany, New York. Utica, in a beautiful metaphor, GE just brought 500 jobs back to Utica, New York, after having left Utica about 30 years ago, they now came home. So that's economic justice, broadly, helping upstate New York the way upstate New York needed help. But it's also deeper than that. And that's what Hilda always reminds us, and Ibero always reminds us. We want the economy to work, but we want the economy to work for everyone. Because we believe the greatest feast is the feast that has the most people at the table. So it's not enough that the economy works and the people at the top of the economy do well. We want to see that growth for everyone on the entire income spectrum. We have a tremendous problem of poverty. Still today, with all the progress we've made, we have some of the worst pockets of poverty in the United States. And it is just not acceptable. We have the problem right here in Rochester. And we put together a task force in Rochester that has brought the best minds, the best resources from all across the region just to work together to focus on poverty. The truth is, you have a lot of uh, new ethnic groups to this state and this country who have not been doing as well as they deserve to be. That's why I'm so proud of what we did with a minority and women-owned business enterprise program, MWBE, which accesses the state's contracts for minority and women-owned businesses. Why is that important? Because the state spends a lot of money on contracts. And that MWBE program can, can actually access a lot of money. Why did Willie Sutton rob banks? When they ask Willie Sutton, why do you rob banks? That's where the money is. MWBE program you want to know about. Why? That's where the money is, the MWBE program. So when Hilda said we took a larger percent of the state contracts and dedicated it to the MWBE program, we started at 10 percent. We went to 20%, we went to 25%, we're now at 30%. 30% is not only the highest in the nation, it's $2 billion in contracts that are going to MWBE employees. We also have a problem in this state of exploited workers. Exploited workers 
usually are people who are new entrants to this country. Often they're undocumented workers who just get exploited. Why? Because unscrupulous employers know they have no choice. What are they going to do? Call the police? They're afraid to go to the authorities. I tried to do this case when I was the attorney general. I learned a powerful lesson because we knew we had evidence of exploited workers. So we, we were going to do an undercover investigation. So we got a couple of the investigators who were in the attorney general's office who were Latino and they were going to pose as undocumented people and get a job and see how they were treated. And we went ahead with the investigation. We sent out several who were undocumented. They got jobs right away. Primarily, we were looking at the restaurants, uh, up higher end restaurants in Manhattan. And they got hired for jobs in the back of the restaurant. We never brought a case. Do you know why we never brought a case? Because the investigators couldn't take the workload and conditions that they were subjected to in the restaurant, and they couldn't work long enough, literally, to make the case. So they would work one week, two weeks, and they would say, I can't do it. I've been working seven days straight. There's no overtime. I've been working 14, 15 hours a day. You don't get a coffee break. And it just brought home to me the condition that people are subjected to. And they have no alternative. We have now started an exploited worker task force that Secretary of State says our oh, paralysis on. Where we're going industry by industry, we're doing the investigations, we're bringing the cases. Today we're going to announce $3 million is going to be returned to workers who were exploited, farm workers, car wash workers, restaurant workers, all across the state. And we're sending the message that is not okay. And the single best thing we can do to make the economy work for everyone and to bring everyone to the table is to raise the minimum wage. Why? Because the minimum wage at $8.75, you cannot support a family in the state of New York. And these minimum wage workers are not teenagers. They're not high schoolers. These are single parents, primarily women. They're supporting a family, and you can't do it on $18,000 a year, not with the cost of living. It's simple math. The numbers don't add up. I want to raise the minimum wage. I want to bring it to $15 so people can actually share in the feast and be part of a functioning economy. And I'm going to propose that to the legislature <laughs> next year. And my last point is this. We're making great progress in this state. More to do, certainly. But the arrows are pointed in the right direction for the first time in a long, long time. And I think you start to feel that, literally, especially in upstate New York. But these are also difficult times, not just in New York, but all across the country. Uh, the economy is schizophrenic. Uh, the analysts will tell you the economy is coming back, but it doesn't really feel good. Uh, people are frustrated. People are angry. People are scared. Uh, you look at what's going on in the world with terrorism, with climate change. There seem to be all sorts of factors that have us out of control. And when you have that kind of fear in people, it can be manipulated and it can be used politically. And one of the targets for that fear now, people are directing it at the immigrants. What is the problem with the economy? We have too many immigrants. Why aren't you making enough money? Because there are too many immigrants. And responding to the fear, they want to say, let's close the borders. Let's close down the United States because we have to stop these immigrants coming in because they are the root of the problem. That is baloney. That is antithetical. <laughs> to 
That is antithetical to who we are and what we believe. New York State is not just another state. New York State makes a statement. New York State stands as a principle. We say as New York, as the gateway to the nation, where people first came in, we say, look, remember that we are all immigrants. Any Native Americans here? All right, then every one of you <laughs> is an immigrant. You're all immigrants. <laughs> and our whole premise is immigration is not a bad thing. It's how we built this country. We had a very simple premise. We said, we're going to put up a sign and we're going to welcome everyone. And we're going to say, hey, come to this state, come to this country, join this family. We're going to work with you. We're going to invest in you. We're going to get you the best education possible. We're going to help you with health care. We're going to help you move your family along. You're going to do well. And then we're all going to do well. That is our concept that we're not just individuals, we're a community. And there's a cord that connects you to you to you to you, and you can't see the cord because it's invisible. But that cord weaves a fabric. And when one of us is raised, that fabric pulls us all up. And when one of us is lowered, that fabric pulls us all down. That's who we are, e pluribus unum, out of many, we make one. That's the founding premise of this nation. So don't, don't now try to say immigration is the problem. Don't play to the fear that way. That solves nothing. And it just foments the anger. We're going to build a wall to keep them out. No. We're the state with the Statue of Liberty in the harbor. We open our arms and we say, we welcome you in. <laughs> our strength, this state, is the greatest state in the United States and the greatest country on the globe, made by immigrants, for immigrants, with immigrants. We are a beautiful testament that tells this nation how strong you can be when you are willing to see the good and find the commonality and not play on the differences and not play on the fears. We're going to move forward, but we're going to move forward together as one. Thank you and God bless you.